Yes, it seems I've been summoned once again to look at a big fat mess. You always hear these math nerds saying, you know, I like math because math is aesthetically pleasing, but bro, what is this? Well, let's take a close look. It's really not all that bad. Unstable Pinecone here says, what on earth does this mean? His eight-year-old sister came home with this math problem and he has no clue what on earth they're getting at. Here's the question. Look at the picture below, then fill in the missing numbers. Here's the picture, and here are the blanks where we are supposed to fill in the missing numbers. The first issue is that the problem, as stated, establishes virtually no connection between the picture that we're asked to look at and the missing numbers. We're just told to look at this and then fill these in. It doesn't say fill in the missing numbers based on the picture or fill in the missing numbers based on the operation shown in the picture or anything like that. But despite that, I do think the answer here is pretty clear. We need to fill in some sort of product and some sort of division. And when you look at the picture, what we see is that there are four groups each with five objects. That means there are 20 objects total. So then the obvious solution is that four groups of five objects is equal to 20 objects. And that 20 objects split into four groups is equal to five objects per group. While the awkward shapes and their different sizes suggest there could be more going on here, this seems like the obvious solution. So I'm sure there wasn't all that much discussion about this problem. Problem. Although we do have Bitta Bear here who saw it a little bit differently. He said, since they're clustered, I saw five times five equals 25 and five divided by five equals one. I'm not really sure where he's seeing that, uh, but thankfully this person isn't sure either. So let's see if we can find a quick clarification in these replies. Um, What? Seriously? What the? What could possibly merit this level of discourse? Well, clearly this problem and the discussion around it is a lot more significant than we had thought. Let's read this. <sighs> That's why I got downloaded. Everybody who it wasn't their first thought of tried to make it all together to adult. I look for horses, not zebra. And there are a heck of a lot of numbers on that page. Rock on! One of the problems... So the post is basically rage. What? The post is basically rage bait? Then what was all of this for, bit of bear? <sighs> okay. I'm gonna try to briefly summarize for you Bitta Bear's arguments. I just wanna mention his name really rolls off the tongue. It's easy to say super quickly. So let's just make sure we know when I say Bitta Bear, we're talking about the guy who started that long discussion. Say it with me, Bitta Bear, Bitta Bear, three, two, own. Bitta Bear. Okay, so remember, Bitta Bear didn't see four times five equals 20 and 20 divided by four equals five. Bitta Bear saw five times five equals 25 and five divided by five equals one. And his argument for why this is the most obvious or most simple solution is actually really simple. It's just this, bam, 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 bam. As in, we have a group of four here, four piles, and we have a group of four here, four blanks. So Bitta Bear said, we'll just put the size of each pile in the corresponding blank. Now all of the piles happen to have sizes of five. So of course this ends up giving us five, times five equals 20. 
5, and 5 divided by 5 equals 1. To me, this seems like a pretty wild stretch to argue that this is actually the intended solution to this worksheet problem. But one of the other characters in Bitabear's novel does mention how this emphasizes something that might be an important thing for younger students to see, which is that two numbers can be combined to produce very different results depending on the operation. Two fives gives us 25 if we're doing multiplication, but it could also give us one if we're doing division. Now, I think this problem was given to a third grade math class. One of the commenters suggests this and the OP does not correct them. They say, I have a hard time believing a teacher actually assigned this to who I'm assuming is a third grader. If they did, then we need them to solve the problem for you. I have to know. Unstable pinecone keeps us waiting with bated breath, but so I do think it's a third grade problem. Bitabear argues, based on the formatting and how much space the students are given to write their answers, that he could see this being as low as a kindergarten level problem. I think another pretty big issue with supposing this as the best solution or intended solution for the problem is that it very clearly ignores some of the most obvious numbers present in the image. There are five objects in each group and that's the only number that is represented in Bitabear's solution. He of course has 25 and 1, but those aren't really part of the picture. On the other hand, the multiplication and division solution involves most of the numbers in the picture, but of course part of what makes this such an ugly problem to look at at first glance is that there are other numbers too, which this does not account for, namely the number of sides of the different types of shapes included in the groups. And that's really my issue with this problem is that it includes an important connection that actually isn't relevant for what I think is the solution. In each group we have all shapes of the same type. Well that must be important, right? Well, I don't know, but it's hard to imagine it being important when the solution has to look something like this. Because everything in the same group is a shape of the same type, this doesn't really look like an illustration of division and multiplication. It looks more like sorting. I'm supposed to look at this and say, oh yeah, this was 20 objects divided into four groups. Uh, it doesn't really look like that. For example, here I've got a stack of 20 objects, just these dots representing counters. And if I wanted to actually divide this into four groups, that's a simple thing. Division is just like repeated subtraction. So there's a counter to one group, a counter to the second group, a counter to the third group, a counter to the fourth group, and we repeat because we're dividing 20 by four. So this is what 20 divided by four looks like. I've got four groups, each with five counters. What this isn't is 20 objects sorted into four groups. How do we know? Well, partly because of how we just did it, but also these counters are actually representing objects and the objects in each group are different because we didn't sort, we just divided. The unsorted objects in all of these groups happen to be the four incredible math inspired designs that you can get get right now at mathshin.com. These prints are really small, so keep that in mind. The actual designs on the products look fantastic. We've got the optimal packing design. That there, that's 17 squares, optimally packed. We've got Tomei's function. That's a calculus design. And of course, our best seller, the pigeonhole principle t-shirt, showing one of the classic principles from combinatorics with mathematicians illustrated as adorable pigeons. I just love it. You gotta go. Mathshin.com. Com. Check it out, link in the description. So hopefully you can see what I mean when I say that this doesn't really look like division because a plain division of 20 objects into four piles would not look like this. This is a sort. Of course, it could look like this. It's just that the structure here suggests something relevant that I don't think is supposed to be. Now, some of you may think, hmm, you're saying this looks more like a sorting operation. What would that look like? How is that different from division? Well, if you ever take a computer computer science class, sorting is something you'll learn a lot about. It's important in so many contexts to be able to sort a list. You probably use sorting functions on all sorts of things without even realizing it, like your text messages appearing in order of where you most recently received a new message, or your phone contacts being sorted alphabetically. There are lots of different ways to sort a list, and these various algorithms make for a great introduction to lots of important computer science concepts. I want to quickly 
quickly show you what it would look like if instead of doing division on our pile of 20 objects, we used a sorting algorithm called bubble sort. This is one of the most basic and thus not super efficient sorting algorithms. Oftentimes we're sorting something like dates or numbers that have very obvious orders to them. Of course, different shapes and different clothing designs do not have obvious orderings. So for this to work, we'll have to impose our own ordering. Like in this example, we might have said, let's just say that triangles are less than squares, which are less than circles, which are less than non-square rectangles. Then we could use a sorting algorithm and get a result like this, no problem. So for the sake of example, let's just say that the pigeon design is less than the Euler and the seven bridges design, which is less than the optimal packing design, which is less than that beautiful Tomei's function design. With that established, here's how bubble sort works on just nine designs, just in the interest of time. Let's say we'll sort from smallest to largest, so the pigeon design should be at the start and the Tomei's function should be at the end. Then look at item one, compare it to the next item, and if the first is greater than the second, we should swap them so that the smaller one gets moved earlier. In this case, the Euler design is less than the optimal packing design, so we don't have to swap. We should do the same thing with the next pair of designs. So we look at item two and compare it to the one after that. The optimal packing design is less than Tomei's function, so again, we don't have to swap. However, in the next pair, we compare Tomei's function to the pigeon design. Tomei's function is greater than the pigeon design, so these need to be swapped. The next comparison is the same thing, Tomei's function to pigeon. Pigeon has to be swapped so it appears earlier, because we're saying pigeon is less than Tomei. And this will continue for the next handful of comparisons. The Tomei's function design bubbles to the start or the end of the list, depending on how you choose to sort. Then we compare Tomei's function to Tomei's function. We're saying these are equal, so no swap has to take place. But then this Tomei's function gets compared to the last item in the list, the optimal packing design, and we need to swap. Now, as long as some swaps took place, which they certainly did, we have to do another run of comparisons and all of the appropriate swaps. So I'm going to take another pass through this list and swap accordingly. Remember, each time the item I'm looking at is greater than the next one, we need to swap. So here I compare Tomei to the optimal packing design. Since Tomei's function is ranked greater, we need to swap. And look at this beautiful sorting taking place. You can see the Tomei's function designs are already there together at the top of the list. And we've got these optimal packing designs grouped together. There's just a little bit of mixing that's still left to be sorted here at the start. So with bubble sort, you continue this process, letting those greater values bubble to the top until you're able to go through each item without making any swaps, at which point you know the list is sorted. In this case, we'll have to go through two more times, one time to finish these final pair of swaps, and then we'd loop through once more to make sure no further swaps are necessary, which they're not. That's how you get a set of distinct items sorted into similar groups. It's not division that does it, it's a really cool algorithm like bubble sort. And I think this issue could quite easily be removed from the problem by just making everything equal sized dots instead of using these awkward groups of similar shapes. Of course, if the designer wanted some differences just to emphasize that these are separate groups that everything's been split into, you could use different colored dots, or if color's not an option, you could use circles that all have different shading patterns on them. Any of those options, I think, would make it easier to see that we're looking looking at a set of 20 objects split into four groups of five, where the specifics of the objects themselves are not super important. Now, going back to the Bitter Bear novel, he discusses some historical educational standards and how now one of the goals of Common Core standards is to try to keep children's intuitions about mathematics alive and to, when possible, reinforce some of those basic strategies of counting that everybody feels intuitively, even as young as kindergarten and first grade. 
trying to reinforce these intuitions can occasionally result in some problems that look weird to people who aren't up to date on math education. I totally agree with that, but I don't think it really reinforces his particular solution because again, his solution ignores counting. He hasn't counted the number of groups and he also hasn't counted the total number of objects. So it's an interesting solution, but I'd be really surprised if this was the intended one. People mentioned too, even in my purported solution, there's some potential ambiguity with the ordering. TV Scott says it's obviously four times five equals 20, not five times four equals 20. It's four sets of five, not five sets of four. What's wrong with people? Of course, we get a dark reply. You laugh, but my kid actually dropped the letter grade in math because of exactly that sort of problem. That is diabolical. I don't think that potential ambiguity is really an issue though. A math problem doesn't have to be completely unambiguous to be a good problem. Often some ambiguity is intentional to spark discussion and to see what ambiguities are actually important. In this case, I think there's a good chance that either ordering four, five, five, four, 25, 24, either ordering would probably receive full credit if those are the intended solutions. Of course, I could be wrong, but trying not to be cynical. Still, another commenter shares much of the concern that I just discussed a minute ago. Here we see that commenter... Ugh. He says, this is an incredibly irksome problem. I think the answer they are looking for is five times four equals 20 and then 20 divided by five equals four because there are 20 total objects separated into four sets containing five objects each. However, the objects in each set are distinctly different, exactly. He likens it to boxes of different sized watermelons and different sized oranges and different sized apples. Who's gonna look at four boxes like that with all these different fruit and say, ah, that's 20. I mean, you might, but hey, it does seem like a little bit of a stretch. Of course, some of the third grade common core math standards might be relevant here, just assuming it's United States math standards since that's what I know best. One of the focuses in third grade is supposed to be operations and algebraic thinking. And a lot of this is relevant to that problem on the worksheet. Represent and solve problems involving multiplication and division, it's that exactly. Understand properties of multiplication and the relationship between multiplication and division, it definitely relates to the relationship there between times and divides. Multiply and divide within 100, yep, it's in there. Solve problems involving the four operations and identify and explain patterns, for sure. So the problem, despite the weirdness with the shapes, does seem super relevant to the third grade standards. There are also standards Standards for geometry in third grade, at least one, the bullet point reason with shapes and their attributes. This kind of flies in the face of that because you're basically just supposed to ignore all the shapes as well as their attributes. But then there are also the mathematical practices standards, a focus on making sense of problems and persevering in solving them and to reason abstractly and quantitatively, to construct viable arguments and to model with mathematics. These things suggest that according to the standards, there may be something to gain from presenting a problem that perhaps suggests a little bit more is going on than actually is. Yes, these are shapes, but if we think a bit more abstractly, it's just 20 objects. Maybe my friend disagrees with me and we can try to make sense of the problems, persevere, and construct viable arguments to try to convince each other. All things told, not a bad problem. And as always, you have to remember we look at this with no context whatsoever for what the students were taught in class and how the teacher may have modeled this sort of problem. But I'm curious what you think. Do you think the intended solution is what I said or what Bitta Bear said, or does the order of the numbers matter, but my solution is otherwise correct? Is it a horrible problem, fine problem? What do you think? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm on table, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untuck the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull my brain and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.